When I was director, um, we started the Crow Lecture Series. That was our first activity, even before we had money from Ford. And that was really amazing, um, because at that time, um, there was so little scholarship on women that mm -hmm. one person like me, an economist, could know what was going on in anthropology, know what was going on in the law, know what was going on in literature. And um, Diane Middlebrook started something called the Crow Group, which was faculty from all those various um, subject matters. Mm -hmm. And we would meet uh, throughout the year. And really, by the end of the year, each of us knew what there was to be known about women's studies in, in these disciplines. Estelle Friedman in history, and uh, because there was so little at the time. And then, you know, scholarship just skyrocketed. Now, now I don't even know all of what's going on in economics, let alone in all of those other fields. But the original Crow Lecture Series was just a marvelous thing. I thought we were going to be uh, thrown out by the fire marshal. <laughs> I got permission from the business school to hold uh, lectures for the center um, in business school classrooms. And so many people came mm -hmm. that um, you know, people were sitting on the floor, people were sitting in the aisles. Wow. Um, most of the people who came were secretaries on campus. Mm. And you know the number of secretaries on campus has been greatly diminished now when we have computers <laughs> and so on. But it used to be that every professor, well, not every professor, no, a secretary would be shared by three or four professors. So you can imagine how many secretaries they were. They were all women, and they were all thrilled mm -hmm. that there was now this center of research on women with lectures every week. And they all came. They brought their lunch. and. Mm -hmm. um, Women came from Los Altos Hills, from Atherton. Um, they, yeah, it was much more adults than students. Some students came, but women students were much less interested in all of this than um, adult women, both at Stanford and beyond. What were these lecture series on the subjects? Well. Um, you know, the first one was on everything conceivable, including uh, bride wealth in Africa and um, affirmative action, um, uh, the law, changes in the law, women in work, um, uh, questions like, is a novel different if it's written by a women, woman and it's written by men? Can you tell that mm -hmm. the novel was different? Do women write differently from men? Um, sex differences in children. Um, you know, all these questions that we had. Why, why are there so few women in science? Uh, yeah, some of these questions we still have today. Yeah. Yeah, so it was a, a time of tremendous intellectual ferment. Mm -hmm. Child care, how can we get a child care system? How can we, and that, that's still a question. Um, yeah. Did these lecture series continue after your time as director? Yes, yes. For many years, the Crow Lecture Series at noon was mm -hmm. one of the main events. Of the, of the campus. And eventually the center hired Margot Davis, who was in charge of, of the lecture series, and mm -hmm. got outside money for it. Uh, one of the most interesting debates at Crow was whether to take money from the Playboy Foundation, <laughs> which wanted to fund one of our lecture series on women in the media. And um, I thought we should take the money. Uh, and the provost, Bill Miller, thought we should take it. And Bill Miller said he thought we should be like the Catholic Church and um, figure that the money was cleansed in the giving. <laughs> um, but other people um, argued that we should not take the money. 
Nan Cohane, who ultimately became um, president of Wellesley and president of Duke, felt we should not take the money, that um, we didn't want the Playboy Foundation to advertise that they were uh, supporting us because that made them look good. Mm. Uh, so in the end, we didn't take the money. Mm. And I had to go to Bill Miller and explain why we didn't take the money. <laughs> um, so, 